नमस्कार Jesus sat there in the temple just a lad of early age talking with the scholars who were utterly amazed they marveled how a child could ever be this wise and when they asked him how old he was it took them by surprise when Jesus said 12 years old <laughs> oh my father's side I'm alpha and omega oh my father's side the beginning and the end oh my father's side throne I left in heaven soon I'll sit down on the right of my father's side it was clear for them to see he was no ordinary boy cause with every word he spoke There was power in his voice. I can almost hear him answer all the questions being thrown as the teacher asked him son. Where do you call home? And Jesus said on mother's side, I'm just a lowly Nazarene. But on my father's side my residence is heaven On my father's side the gates stand open wide To my father's side where the saints will be rejoicing When I step across the tide Father side If your sins are washed away then you have been redeemed Now we are his family so join with us and sing on our father side a residence is heaven On our father's side the gates stand open wide to our father's side where the saints will be rejoicing when we step across the tide when we step across the tide when we step across the tide to our father's side amen high upon this mountain The sun is shining bright My heart is filled with gladness Here above the cares of life But I've just come through a valley of trouble fear and pain It was there I came to know my God Enough to stand and say Even in the valley God is good Even in the valley he is faithful and true He carries his children through like he said he would Even 
this road of life has led me through a valley of defeat. You wonder if the Father has heard your desperate plea, but there is hope in that rugged place where tears and sorrow dwell. Can't you hear him gently whispering, I'm here and all is well. Even in the valley, God is good. Even in the valley, he is faithful and true. He can. Have your Bible tonight. Uh, I told Leon, I said, I said, pray. Uh, I said, pray for me. I, I don't have anything outlined tonight. Uh, he said, well, you don't need one. I said, well, pray for y'all. Because without that, I don't never know when to stop. Right? So, uh, if you have your Bible tonight, look with me in the, the book of Daniel. Amen. The book of Daniel, chapter number five. What are you going to do when the party's over? I heard one, one preacher preach uh, out of this passage, and uh, he preached, what are you going to do when the wine runs out? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to still want it. You're going to still crave it. What are you going to do when the dancing stops and the music stops? You'll still have a desire for it. You'll still have a, a burning desire for that old, old worldly garbage. But you know what? Never being satisfied. According to the book of Revelation, after it's all said and done, even there in hell and the lake of fire, the Bible says, let him that is filthy be filthy still. I believe whatever you, uh, uh, how you die, if you die without God, you die with all these passions and desires for all these uh, unnatural desires and things in your life, I believe you're going to crave that throughout eternity. I believe the Bible teaches that, along with all the other horrors. Uh, you know, the Bible is a horror book. Yeah, you find horror stories in the Bible. You find love stories in the Bible. You can find stories about war. Love, hate, war. You can read about deceit, corruption. Anything you want to find, uh, you can find it in the Word of God. If you want a horror story, man, you can find the most, the most horrible horror story uh, that Stephen King doesn't know anything about. That Alfred Hitchcock never could hatch up. Right? I'll tell you, when you get reading about hell, you get reading about eternity, you get reading, I'm telling you what, honey, it's, it's a scary thing. You say, well, I don't think you're scared people to God. Well, I'm glad I got, I got very afraid one day. That I was going to drop into, I don't, I, I don't believe I ever got saved if I, hadn't, if I hadn't got scared. Do you? 
You think, I'll just preach it on heaven all the time. Uh, I didn't get saved because I wanted to go to heaven. Amen? I was happy right here. And you was too. If you could just spend eternity right here, like everything going, uh, most people would have chose to stay right here, not have to make a choice either way. You know that's right, man, it's hot in that. Y'all hot or is it just me? Boy, it's hot up here. I'm sure glad I'm saved, that's all I can say. Amen, but if you got your Bible, we're going to read about old Belshazzar. Um, Belshazzar the king made, a, chapter 5, Daniel. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords and drank wine before the thousand. That was a big shingding. Amen. This wasn't just some little, this little party over, over at his house, honey. I mean, he had, a, he had a great hall there. He had a thousand of his, his uh, lords that were there, uh, dignitaries that were there. And the Bible says he drank wine before the thousand. He had a bad influence. Right? Belshazzar, while he tasted wine, now listen here, listen here, commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels which his father Nebuchadnezzar had taken out of the temple, which was in Jerusalem, that the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines might drink therein. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God, which was at Jerusalem, and the king and his princes, his wives, his concubines drank in them. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver, of brass, of iron, of wood and of stone. The same hour came forth fingers. Listen now. Listen now. Ooh. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand. Can you imagine that? We sitting, over, sitting here tonight in the house of God. We look up over there. We see a hand appear on the wall. This sort of like thing from the Adams family. <laughs> right? Come out on the wall. <laughs> right? Saw, saw a man's hand on the wall. Writing. That's what the book says. I, hey, God said this. Now you kids go and tell your teachers and tell everybody, tell your grandparents, tell everybody what the preacher said. Amen? Okay, where are we at? Verse what? Five. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and rode over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. It wasn't Kilroy. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Then the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. And baby, he wasn't doing the funky chicken. Nope. And this was a long time before that. It was ever invented, amen? Someone thought that he had invented a new dance. That wasn't what was going on. Amen? Then the king, then king cried aloud to bring in the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers. And the king spake and said to the wise men of Babylon, Whosoever shall read this writing and show me the interpretation thereof shall be clothed with scarlet, have a chain of gold about his neck, and shall be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then came in all the king's wise men, but they could not read the writing, nor make known the king the, to the king the interpretation thereof. Then was King Belshazzar greatly troubled, and his countenance was changed in him, and his lords were astonished. Now the queen, by reason of the words of the king and his lords, came into the banquet house, and the queen spake and said, O king, live forever. Let not thy thoughts trouble thee, nor let thy countenance be changed. There is a man in thy kingdom, in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. In the days of thy father, light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods was found in him, whom the king thy father made master of the magicians, astrologers, Chaldeans, and soothsayers, for as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding interpretation, uh, interpreting dreams, and showing of hard sentences, and dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel, whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called, and he will show the interpretation. 
Then was Daniel brought in before the king, and the king spake and said unto Daniel, Art thou that Daniel, which are the children of the captivity of Judah, whom the king, my father, brought out of Jury? I have even heard of thee, that the spirit of the gods is in thee, and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in thee. And now the wise men, the astrologers, have been brought in before me, that they should read this writing, and make known unto me the interpretation thereof, but they could not show the interpretation of the thing. I have heard of thee, that thou canst make interpretations and dissolve doubts. Now if thou canst read the writing and make known to me the interpretation thereof, thou shalt be clothed with scarlet and have a chain of gold about thy neck and shalt be the third ruler in the kingdom. Then Daniel answered and said before the king, let thy gifts be to thyself and give thy rewards to another. Yet I will read the writing unto the king and make known to him the interpretation. O thou king, the most high God gave Nebuchadnezzar thy father a kingdom and majesty and glory and honor. And for majesty that he gave him, all the people, nations, languages, trembled and feared before him, whom he, would, uh, whom he would he slew, and whom he would he kept alive, and whom he would he set up, and whom he would he put down. But when his heart was lifted up, and his mind hardened in pride, he was disposed from his kingly throne, and took his glory from him, and was driven from the sons of men. And his heart was made like the beast, and the dwelling was as the wild asses. They fed with the grass like oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till he knew that the Most High God ruled the kingdom of men, that he appointed over whomsoever he will. And thou his son, O Belteshazzar, Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this. You knew all this is what he said. He said you knew all about what happened. He said, but you didn't, didn't let it uh, be an influence on your life. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar, hast not humbled thine heart, though thou knewest all this, but hast lifted up thyself against the Lord of heaven, that they have brought the vessels of the house before thee, and, thou, and thy lords, thy wives, thy concubines, have drunk wine in them. And thou hast praised the gods of silver, of gold, of brass, of iron, of wood, of stone, and see not, that see not, nor hear, nor know, and the God in whom thy hand, thy breath is, the hand of thy breath is, in whom are all thy ways, hast thou not glorified. And then was the part of the hand sent forth to him, and this writing was written. And this is the writing that was written. Many, many, tekel, euphorism. This is the interpretation of the thing. Many, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. Tekel, thou art weighed in the balance and found wanton Paris. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. Then commanded Belshazzar, and they clothed Daniel with scarlet and put a chain of gold about his neck and made a proclamation concerning that he should be the third ruler in the kingdom. In that night was Belshazzar the king of the Chaldeans slain, and Darius the Median took the kingdom, being about three score and two years old. Let's go to the throne of grace. Father in heaven, thank you for the good word of God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for grace and mercy. We, we're glad, Father, for your good word tonight. We pray that you'll help us as we preach. Next few minutes, dear God, make us a blessing. And Father, help us to learn. Learn some things, dear Father, about morality, about holiness, about honoring God and putting you first, about desecrating holy things. Lord God, we'll give you all the glory and all the praise for all you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, the Bible tells us that old Belshazzar, there he was. Man, I mean, he was dictator. I mean, he was the king. Praise God. He thought that he was the king of the world. Uh, that was a world power at that time. They had conquered nation after nation after nation. And great Babylon, great Babylon was the, the greatest power on the face of the earth. He thought, right? He thought. But little did he know that there was a greater power than him. There was a greater God than him. And the Word of God tells us that he had thrown this big bash, this big party. They were partying down. I picture it in my mind, Great Babylon. It was one of the seven wonders of the world, the great walls that encircled this great city of Babylon. Uh, they, they were known for their famous gardens, and their hanging, the hanging gardens and their beauty and their glory. There was a, 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 the river flowed underneath 
the wall of the, of the city. And they, they had fountains all through the city and the water was distributed throughout channels and all throughout the city to water the garden. Uh, people came from all over to view this great wonder and this, these great things. They say that the, the walls were so thick and so great that they would have chariot races around the top of the walls of great Babylon during those days. And uh, they, they felt secure, they felt safe long as they were behind those mighty walls of Babylon. They thought for sure that no one could conquer. They thought that no one could defeat them. They, they felt that they were superior with their great armies, with their mass, mass walls of defense to fortify them in case some enemy may, may come at any time against them. And they, they thought safe, even though they knew that there was a danger with the Medes and the Persians, and there was an uproar, and there was a danger, and there was rumors uh, about Darius the Mede. And, and, the, and the Persians, and that uh, they, they were a threat to great Babylon, but they thought as long as they were inside these walls, they were safe. So we're not going to worry about it. We're just going to party down. We're just going to drink our booze. We're just going to run with our women. We're just going to have a good time and party and do all that we want to do. And we're going to forget all about God. We're going to forget about all these things. And everything was going pretty good. Man, the party was a jamming, the rock and roll. Uh, man, they were getting down. They were playing the rock and roll. I, I mean, everything was good. Man, the old king, he's sitting there. He's a laughing, carrying on, having a good time. He's a drinking. And all of a sudden, something entered his mind. That vile, wicked, unregenerate mind of old Belshazzar. He remembered something. He remembered those beautiful golden vessels that they had ravaged the temple of the Jews and took those vessels out of that Jewish temple and had carried them away down into Babylon. And he, he commanded some of his servants, he said, I'll tell you what we'll do. He says, you go and get, get those golden vessels and you bring them in here and we're gonna make a mockery to those Jews. We're gonna mock them and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna drink our booze and we're gonna party using the vessels of their God while we praise the gods of silver and the gods of wood and the gods of gold and our man-made gods. We're gonna make a mockery of the, the, that God, the God that they call the true God of heaven and while they were, had the vessels of God in their hand and while they were drinking wine, they looked over there and they saw the handwriting on the wall. You know what happened? Old Belshazzar went too far. He went too far when he got to messing with those vessels, those special, dedicated, sanctified vessels of God. I tell you what, honey, I, I want you to remember uh, tonight when you got saved by the grace of God, you are a special, chosen vessel of God. And you better be careful what you put in that vessel. You better be careful how you treat that vessel because God takes it very serious, amen? Praise God, it's not one to fill with smoke. It's not one to fill with alcohol. It's not one to fill with drugs. It's not one to fill with the ungodly things of this world. Praise God, and you better take it very serious, amen? Praise God, Belshazzar, he didn't take it serious. Those were vessels, that, instruments that were used in the worship of the true and living God. And here he was desecrating it, making a mockery of it, trying his best to make a mockery of the true and living God. And the Bible says the handwriting was on the wall. In other words, old boy, the party's over. Now what you gonna do? I mean, it messed the party up. Things was going good. But when God shows up in the party, man, it just does something to it. It just kills the joy. It just kills the spirit. It just kills all the fun. When you're out there drinking and living like hell and somebody starts talking about Jesus. I mean, somebody pulls out a copy of the Word of God and starts saying, hey, this is what the Bible says. There ain't nobody that's drinking and partying and raising hell that wants to hear that. You didn't want to hear it when you was lost. If you was out there smoking dope, smoking crack, living like a dog, living in sin, you didn't want somebody to say, hey, this is what the Bible said. If you was down there shacked up with some woman, you didn't want somebody to come in and open up a Bible and say, this is what the Bible says about fornication. This is what the Word of God says about adultery. I mean, if you like to drink Budweiser and drink Jack Daniels and, and guzzle, you didn't want to hear what the Bible had to say about strong drink. I mean, if you like to party and dance and live ungodly and 
run with that crowd. You didn't want nobody messing up your party. And Belshazzar didn't want nobody messing up his party either. But he got his party crashed. God crashed the party. I mean, right in the middle of, of his favorite song. I mean, right when everything was going good, right at the highlight of the party, man, they got these nice vessels now, they're drinking and guzzling, and all of a sudden, it's writing on the wall. What is this? I don't understand this. Why is this happening? Praise God, he called in the soothsayers, he called in the astrologers, he called in the magicians, he called in all the, 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 uh, his men, and none of them could interpret it. No one could talk, but praise God, uh, there, there, was, there was his, his mother. Some, I read some uh, commentaries that said it was his grandmother that Belshazzar was actually the grandson of great Nebuchadnezzar. But the Bible says it's his son. But I know many times the Bible refers to grandsons and great-grandsons as sons. So I, I really don't know, but regardless, praise God, he should have learned something from daddy or grandpa. Because Nebuchadnezzar, even though he was driven because of his pride and lifting up in his sinful pride, God dr drove him out like a wild beast. His hair grew out like a, a wild man, like an old hermit. His fingernails drew, uh, grew out like claws of an eagle. And, and he was out there naked running around. His hair grew all out like a crazy man, wild man. Upon the dew, the dew of heaven fell upon him. People would look at him and say, what in the world's wrong with the king? He's gone crazy. He's plumb loony. Praise God. And for a space of time, God left him out there until he acknowledged the true and the living God. Hallelujah. Hey, his grandson ought to learn the lesson, but he didn't. He ought to learn the lesson. You don't mess with God. Dr. Ed McAbee preached a great message years ago. You don't mess with God. That's what he said. You say, what did he say? You don't mess with God. That's what he said, amen. Praise God. And the way he said it, buddy, you knew he meant it, praise God. I'm telling you, you don't. You don't mess with God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. The Bible tells us Man, he was a trembling. His, his knees smoked together. He was a trembling. Someone said, what in the world's wrong with the king? And somebody else said, are you blind? Don't you see that on the wall over there? Oh my goodness, what in the world's going on? And then the word of God tells us that he, he, the, when he hears about Daniel, he calls for Daniel. He offers Daniel all this stuff. He said, you keep your rewards. He said, I don't need all this stuff. He said, I, I, don't, I, I don't need all, all that. Uh, Daniel knew it's all getting ready to come to an end. Even though they give him all that stuff, he thought, what am I going to do with this? This, this whole deal's about to fold up. This whole thing's about to go under. That's what, that was the message, man. That, it wasn't popular down in Babylon to talk to the king like that. But that Daniel, man, he had guts. He didn't fool around. He's ready to go to the lion's den if he needs to go to the lion's den. Praise God. He run with that crowd like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I mean, them boys didn't play around. They were tough for God. Praise God. That was that crowd that had rather, they'd rather burn than bow. Daniel would rather be chewed up and consumed by lions than to conform to that Babylonian system. Right? So he wasn't going to let old Belshazzar bully him around. He wasn't going to let him tell him what to preach. He wasn't going to get him to give some smooth interpretation about what that was on the wall. Right? So praise God, Daniel told him, and praise God, and I, I can see old Belshazzar, man, he's probably upset, and, and he said, well, uh, thank you for coming, preacher. We appreciate you coming and giving us that message today, and uh, we'll call you later. But Daniel's thinking, there ain't going to be no later. Don't you know that old boy went to bed very troubled that night? It was his last night on earth. His last night. While all this was taking place, you know what was happening? Just up the river a ways was the army of Darius, Darius the Mede, and the Persians. They were together up there. And you know what they were doing? They were damming up the river. Oh, this is not recorded in the Bible, but historians, it's, it's accurate. That's what happened. They were damming up the river. They weren't thinking about it. They thought they were safe, man. Everybody's at the party. Everybody's having a big time. 
all the servants, all the dignitaries. Man, everybody is commanded to be there that night. Uh, maybe, maybe just a few guards here and there. I don't know. But while it's going on, they dam it up the river and they, dry, they detour the river around Babylon. And you know what happens? They come in and they go under the wall through the riverbed. And they go in and they start destroying, killing, ravaging. Darius the Mede dies. I mean, uh, old Belshazzar dies that night. And Darius takes his throne. Why? Because Belshazzar was weighed in the balance. And he was found wanting. Like every poor lost sinner. Every poor lost sinner that's outside of the grace of God, the handwritings on the wall. Now I said all that to say this. What are you going to do when the party's over? What are you going to do when the wine runs out? Just keep on, amen. They just keep right on living for the devil doing the same old thing, living the same old life. But one of these days, honey, the party's going to be over. I want to be found with Daniel. I want to be found with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I want to be found with that crowd that loves God and stays, that takes a stand for God. And you know it's not very long after old Darius comes to power. Praise God. Daniel is exalted and raised up in the kingdom. Praise God. The old Darius sees that there's an excellent spirit in him. Praise God. And Daniel is still promoted even though old Belshazzar and his former administration is wiped out. Amen? Praise God. I'm glad I'm saved tonight. I'm glad, praise God, I'm on the Lord's side. Someone said God's on my side. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you better get on his side. Amen? Hey, he'll be on your side as long as you're on the side of right. Amen. You better get on his side and stay on his side. Praise God. Let's stand with our heads bowed and our eyes closed.